stark choice for union workers in Pennsylvania, we're learning ahead of the president's speech there earlier this week. Show up if you want to get paid or burn one of your days off. And by the way, if you're not there, you're not eligible for overtime. CNN obtaining this memo sent to Shell Union workers at the Beaver Creek, Pennsylvania plant ahead of Trump's Tuesday visit. And the memo was written by a contractor for Shell. We're told it reads in part, no yelling, shouting, protesting, or anything viewed as resistance will be tolerated at the event. Those who are not in attendance will not receive overtime pay on Friday. To be clear, Trump and his team did not write this memo. Also, I want to remind you, Trump's speech on Tuesday was billed as an official White House event, not a campaign rally for his re-election bid. But the president did directly mention the Shell plant. I love the unions and I love the workers. And you know, when I built buildings in New York, I built them exclusively with union. People don't understand that. I was exclusive. This Shell petrochemical plant in Beaver County, Pennsylvania, I did very well here. We did very well. How many points did we win by? Does anybody know? Let's get right to CNN's Kristen Holmes in Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, near the president's Bedminster Golf Resort. Um, Kristen, what does Shell have to say about this memo? Hi, Anna. Well, Shell is denying that they wrote this memo, and they particularly are taking issue with that line you read about protesting, saying that any language about worker conduct did not come from the company. Uh, but when it came to that language about overtime, this is what the spokesperson told us. He said it was understood that some would choose not to attend the presidential visit and were given the option to take paid time off instead. As with any work week, if someone chooses to take PTO, they are not eligible to receive maximum overtime. So again, uh, essentially saying there that it's only mandatory if you want to get paid. Now we have reached out to the White House to see if they have any response to this. We have yet to hear back. Anna. Okay, Kristen, thank you for that. Joining us now to talk more about the memo and the optics, CNN political analyst Michael Shear, also White House correspondent for The New York Times, and Jay Newton Small, a contributor to Time Magazine. Jay, what's your reaction to this memo? Anna, it would seem to really mix politics and work in environments, right? And that's something that traditionally is, doesn't really happen in the, in the United States, where you're not forced to actually take part in politics. You, each person has their own politics. You don't have to say who you voted for. And so to say that you are required as part of your job, if you want to get paid and if you want to be eligible for overtime benefits, to go to um, a, a, an event or a rally that is a political rally of na in, in its nature, that's not actually something that is um, necessarily pertinent to your job or necessary to your job, would seem uh, very un abnormal. It's just it's not w what the norm is in the United States for these kinds of things. And Michael, according to this memo, employees were directed to arrive at 7 a.m. We know the event didn't start until 2. No lunch boxes allowed. Breakfast provided, but not lunch. Again, this memo was not distributed by anyone on the Trump staff. But we do know how much the president cares about crowd size. And he often talks about people standing in long lines for his events. Was this all to curry good favor with the president? Well, I, I don't think we know for sure, but I mean, I think you can make a, an assumption that when people uh, are putting together these events for the president, whether they're explicitly political events or whether they're official White House events, there is enormous pressure on anyone putting an event like that together uh, with this president to generate a crowd that, you know, that won't look uh, like the place is half filled. Um, and, you know, I mean, I think what, what this underscores is what we are going to see for the next, you know, 12, 16 months, 18 months before the next election. Uh, which is an increasing, um, uh, increasing likelihood that whether an event is a po explicitly political event like a rally organized by the campaign or whether it's an appearance by the president um, organized by the White House, they're all going to be political. This is a president that doesn't stick to the script. He doesn't stick to the teleprompter. And, you know, as we just saw at, at, you know, at, at that event and at so many other events recently, um, he, he veers off of whatever the official topic and subject is to talk about everything uh, on, on, you know, in front of him, much of which is political. In fact, this is something he had to say at the event. Let's listen. I'm going to speak to some of your union leaders to say, I hope you're going to support Trump, okay? And if they don't, vote them the hell out of office because they're not doing their job. It's true. Vote them out of office. 
Jay, there is a real fear of how this president retaliates. Absolutely, you've seen him retaliate on on, all, on a lot of levels, you know, whether it's um, going after Amazon because they own the Washington Post um, to some degree. I mean, they've never done it, that, that I should be careful to say, they've never done that officially. They've never actually said that it was because of that, but certainly um, he talks a lot about how he doesn't like the Washington Post, he doesn't like Amazon, he doesn't, and when he says these things in speeches, his, you know, people in the government listen and then they actually take action on these things. And so you've seen a lot of the companies that he names in speeches, then later on, um, they're cases brought against them in the FTC and the Federal Trade Commission or in other areas. And so it is something that you clearly, um, there's a link between the politics and and what he's saying, even if it's a non-official, even if it's a sort of not political event, it's a, it's a White House event. It is something that he doesn't, as Michael was saying, he doesn't really have any distinctions here. What Donald Trump says is what Donald Trump says, and it doesn't really matter what the event is. And that's clear on Twitter, and it's also clear in real life. And today the president is tweeting about the planned protests that are happening now in Portland involving white supremacists and counter protesters, including those affiliated with Antifa, a group that bills itself as a left wing anti fascist organization. Let me remind everybody what the president said about this quote, major consideration is being given to naming Antifa an organization of terror. Portland is being watched very closely. Hopefully the mayor will be able to properly do his job. Michael, two years ago this very week, President Trump said, you know, there were fine people on both sides of the Charlottesville violence. In this tweet, there is no condemnation of the white supremacists also holding events in Portland. Should anyone read into that? Well, I mean, I, I look, it, it underscores what is what, you know, has amazed everybody about this president since uh, since certainly since that happened in, and probably long before that, which is that he just doesn't care sometimes about the criti criticism. Most presidents uh, in the wake of uh, the kind of criticism that he got after Charlottesville would have adjusted their language, would have adjusted their rhetoric to understand uh, that at, at the very least they want to put forward some sense of understanding of condemnation uh, of, of white supremacist groups. But here we are, you know, barely a couple of weeks after, um, you know, two of the most deadly shootings uh, involving uh, people who are, you know, uh, on that side of the spectrum, on the sort of white supremacist, white racist side of the spectrum, committing these horrible acts. And you would think that the president would go out of his way uh, to, uh, you know, to condemn that, to, to, to have an opera. Here's another opportunity to uh, to condemn it. And he doesn't. And so, you know, while I don't know that we can get inside his head and know exactly what he uh, feels in his heart, I, I think it's pretty clear from his rhetoric, uh, kind of the message that he wants to send. And that's not to condemn the white racists. It's to condemn the liberals, the, uh, the, what, what he views as, as, as kind of the left.